Healer of our every ill, light of eternal morrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Spirit of our comfort, fill our hearts. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. all your vision, God of love. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Give us strength to Spirit of our kindness, be our guide. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. of compassion fill each heart. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. 
the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call in the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his peoples, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in, the, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he was giving when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body that is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he took the cup also after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured the water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, Are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you were clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for this is what I am. So if I, your your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and I will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this Everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love, if you have love for one another. 
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A theme for our Holy Week this year is a reminder that we're not in control and that we ought to develop a better sense of patience. Particularly in Europe and North America, many of us have this privileged sense of being in control. That when we find ourselves in jams, there's enough money, resources, influence, sheer will even that can get us out of those jams. And we expect it to happen very quickly too, don't we? Now we have the coronavirus. And while it's not from God, I don't believe this is God willed, but we are humbled here in realizing that we don't have as much control as we thought. And we should take this time to center ourselves in the word and in the promises of our God, which are everlasting. Today is Maundy Thursday, and if you Never been to a Monday Thursday service. It's the beginning of what's known as the three days or the Triduum. On this day, we remember the Last Supper, uh, the institute in the institution of the Lord's Supper, which is also known as the Sacrament of Holy Communion. In John's Gospel, we get a, an image of Jesus as servant, as he washes the, the feet of his disciples, and we hear Jesus's command to love one another. In our lesson from Exodus, we hear of the Passover celebration. This is important for us because it has significance for who Jesus is to us and to the world. Now, the Passover is when the Israelites uh, were spared that plague in which the firstborn sons were going to die from this plague. And the Israelites were spared because they had lamb's blood on the doorposts. And this story uh, is significant because it's about their deliverance from slavery to freedom. And Jesus becomes our Passover and our sacrifice. Through the blood of Christ and being joined to Christ, we pass over from death to life. When we read further along in the book of Exodus, we learn that the deliverance that the Israelites experience uh, is just the beginning, and it's not uh, what they've envisioned. In fact, their impatience will cause them to say things like, we were better off slaves in Egypt, and then uh, their impatience will cause them to create a golden calf and to worship it uh, as an idol. Now, our lives have changed, and it's only been a matter of weeks. Can we better understand the impatience of the Israelites? Can we better understand the temptation to succumb to idolatry? The convenience, the privilege, the idolatry in my own life has been put into perspective. Guess what? Amazon Prime always promised me two, uh, two day uh, shipping for free with that Prime membership. What a fool I was to put my faith and trust in such a promise. We assume that uh, science is at our disposal and is precise as precise as Google Maps taking us to our final destination. But we've learned how modeling uh, can guide us. It can certainly keep us safe, but there are too many variables and unknowns in order to give us a precise understanding of what this outcome is gonna look like. We don't have as much control as we think we do. We never really had as much control as we thought. We're dependent on God to deliver us. We are dependent on God. Jesus comes to be our lamb, to be our Passover, to be our sacrifice. Jesus comes to be our savior. This is also a time to really reflect on the communal nature of our faith. In the United States, there's been too much of an individualizing of the Christian faith, I fear. We want it to be about me and Jesus and not we and Jesus. The church is uh, the, uh, the people of Israel is, is a community of God's people. The church is a community of God's people. The Passover is a communal meal. The meal that Jesus institutes this evening is also to be a communal meal. Jesus invites us to his table, and that's a family table. 
there's an interesting paradox that's taking place in the midst of all this, that we're, we're um, separated physically, but we're experiencing this together. So we're connected in a very unique way. How do we hear Jesus' command to serve one another? And coming out of this, will that serving one another look differently? Now, churches have done foot washing on this day. And whenever I've done that, if you get your feet washed, you have your, if you wash someone's feet, then your feet must be washed by someone else. One who serves must humble themselves and allow themselves to be served as well. That's the Christian way of life that's being modeled for us in Jesus Christ. You give, you receive. And maybe we're seeing that lived out, a modern, uh, a foot washing of sorts. When we look at those essential workers on the front lines in the medical profession, how they're putting their life on the line, loving as Christ loves us to provide care for the sick and dying, even if that means giving up their lives. There are also those who go to work every day that are also essential workers so that we can have our basic needs met like groceries so that we can sh safely shelter in place. They're out there every day. There's this realization, an obvious one, but we're dependent on other people. We're always dependent on each other. We've always been a, a, a dependent on those essential workers, but it goes against the narrative of American individualism that success and survival can totally be on your own. And it's simply not true. We need the help and support of others along the way. We always have and we always will. But the church ought to lift this up as not as weakness, but as virtue. The world likes to see it as weakness, but we can lift it up as virtue. And there's a call to be patient here. There are times in my own life where I thought I, God was taking too long and giving me an answer. And so I tried to figure, out on my, figure it out on my own and it blew up in my face. And guess what? My wisdom, my ways, our ways, our wisdom doesn't come close to the ways and wisdom of God. I pray that we can develop a better sense of patience with one another and with God. May we let go of our way and follow the way of Christ. May our patience give us the ability to see the living God in our midst and the needs of our neighbor. I pray that when we learn the importance of slowing down, that we also understand and are honest with our own needs, that we could continue to humble ourselves to allow others to serve us. And then in serving us, Christ is serving us through our neighbor. Beloved people of God, let go, slow down, look to Christ, serve and be served, love one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them. Asu, Asu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are wealthy and poor, varied in color and race. Neighbors are nearby and far away. Hazu, Hazu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we will serve. These are the ones we will love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Hazel, Hazel, fill us with your love. 
show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneel at the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we will live with you. United with Christians around the globe this Maundy Thursday, let us pray for the church, the earth, the world, and all in need. Blessed are you, holy God, for the church. Gather all the baptized around your presence in the word. Strengthen the body of your people even when we cannot assemble for worship. Grant bishops, pastors, deacons, musicians, and all worship leaders the ability to faithfully carry out their ministry in this time and accompany those preparing for baptism. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, bountiful God, for this good earth and for the flowering of springtime. Allow in this time the planting of fields for food. Make us into caregivers of your plants and animals. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, sovereign God, for our nation. Inspire all people to live in peace and unity. Grant wisdom and courage to heads of state and to legislators as they face the coronavirus. Lead our elected officials to champion the cause of all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, faithful God, for you accompany all who suffer with love. Abide wherever the coronavirus has struck visit all who mourn their dead, all who have contracted the virus, those who are quarantined or stranded away from home, those who have lost their employment, those who fear the present and the future, support physicians, nurses, home health aides, and medical researchers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, gracious God, for you care for the needy, we beg you to feed the hungry, protect the refugee, embrace the distressed, house the homeless, nurse the sick, and comfort the dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, loving God, that your Son knelt before us, your unworthy servants. Preserve our lives, comfort our anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, eternal God, for all who have died in faith. At the end, bring us with them into your everlasting glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive, merciful God, our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, the host of our meal of life, who died and rose that we might live with you, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 88 O Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation, for I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength, lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs up on me heavily, and all your great waves overwhelm me. You have put my friends far from me. You have made me to be abhorred by them. I am in prison and cannot get free. 
My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave, your faithfulness in the land of destruction? Will your wonders be known in the dark, or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors and am helpless. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. They surround me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor you have put away from me. And darkness is my only companion.